Today I've got a really great Standell Studio 15 guitar amp from the 1960s, mid-1960s. Beautiful condition. The grill cloth is just stunning. The case is all original. Uh, there haven't been any, any touch-ups or anything done to it. The only issue was that it had an input stage that was blown on it. And so 20 years ago I built my own circuit, but the gain was a little too high and the uh, noise was high. So I've got the right circuit parts now and I'm going to rebuild the circuit in this thing and we'll see if we can bring it back to life. Okay, so here's the amplifier itself. I can see that someone scratched their initials here. It looks like uh, 52065. So it looks like May 1965 this uh, amplifier chassis was put together. Uh, you can see the four blocks here. Uh, that Standell was using to create these uh, devices. This was the input stage that was blown and the three other modules uh, do different functions. One is reverb uh, and a couple other gain, uh, gain stages I believe. But they're encased in rock hard epoxy. And I tried taking some epoxy off as impossible. Uh, so I just gave up and I guessed at what this circuit should be 20 years ago and I built this thing and actually I was I was a little uh, smart back then. I even put the schematic for that little circuit right here on the inside so somebody in the future could find it, like I guess myself. So we're going to try to replace this with a gain stage that's closer to the original uh, schematic and specifications. Now 20 years ago I also replaced the power supply capacitors. They've got nice new caps in here. Uh, we'll see if those are still good or if I need to replace those. And I think it uh, looks like I added this uh, metal oxide varistor here, perhaps, to uh, prevent electrical spikes from damaging anything. So in that case, it would blow the fuses uh, instead of damaging your circuit if there's a, a surge in power. So that's what we're up against today, uh, really trying to figure this circuit out here and replace that. Brought this back for old time's sake. This is the original blown input stage here. Uh, and that used to drop right here. There was a plastic case. You can see I tried to crack some epoxy off to get a clue of what was going on inside and I couldn't get very far. So uh, there was, I think, a plastic case around this because the other three do have a clear plastic case with a little bit of paint on the edge. This one's got red paint, this one's got green paint, and that one's yellow paint. And I did not keep that clear case apparently uh, 20 years ago. So I don't know what color paint was on it, unfortunately. Uh, but it looks to me like it's awful similar to the yellow one here. Uh, except for two extra wires coming out of this yellow one. So, I don't know, I might have a chance at finding a substitute or a uh, original block that we could just drop in there. But I've also got uh, a bag of parts here to build the new circuit and a schematic of how the old circuit supposedly was. Uh, that I found on the internet. So that's what we're going to use to try to recreate this. Alright, here is the Standell Studio Amp with the circuit that I built 20 years ago, around uh, 2001 in it. Like I said, the gain's a little high and it's a little noisy. So let's turn this on and see how it goes. This is uh, clean with a Stratocaster here. Uh, let's see if I turn the reverb all the way down. Some of the hum goes away. Turn the reverb all the way up. There's a little bit of a 60 hertz hum. See if we can get rid of that too. Uh, let's see, I've got volume at about a 2, treble at 3, bass at about 6. And I've got the uh, vibrato off. <laughs> set on uh, both neck and bridge uh, pickups here. Alright, so this is the input jack here. The black and green wires go here for the input and the ground respectively. The red wire goes right here to this guy, which is the negative side of the cap because it's a minus 20 something volt power supply. And the yellow wire, where is the yellow wire? 
oh, which is green because I didn't have a yellow wire, goes to this side of the pot right here. So when you turn the volume all the way up, you get maximum signal. So that makes sense. So now we're going to wire in our little breadboarded prototype here. See how it sounds, and if we like it, we'll turn it into a circuit board. So the original circuit that I built back here is, is disconnected completely now. And I've gone ahead and made a breadboarded version of the circuit that I've uh, been saving the parts for for a long time. And I've tacked those in here, here, and to the input jack. And uh, we'll see how this performs. If we like it, we'll go ahead and make a circuit that's like this, but using these parts. And if we need to tweak it, we may tweak it while we've got it apart. Uh, breadboard makes it real easy to tweak stuff. Okay, so I've got my circuit in, uh, I've got my circuit in the box now, the little breadboard circuit. I did not connect the reverb cable, so I just turned the reverb all the way down. But I didn't touch any of the other controls. The treble's still way turned down, the bass is a little hot, uh, and the volume's at the same place. So let's see how it sounds here. So it's really bassy and it's missing a lot of treble, so let's see if we can get some of that back. Here's some trouble. Still sounds pretty bassy. Maybe I should cut some more bass out here. It's a little trebly there. So the noise is a lot lower than before. I can tell right away that it's a lot less noisy. So that's great. Uh, we're going to see, I think the bass is actually probably okay if you're on stage. This is a 15 inch woofer. It's meant to throw some bass out there. So I might leave the bass how it is and just in a room you turn the bass down and if you're on stage you turn it up a little bit more. Because uh, it's, it's good to have some powerful bass there when you need it. So here I am in LT Spice Simulator. Uh, this on the right is the My Circuit from 2001, and and here's the frequency response of that circuit. So from between about 100 hertz to 10 kilohertz, which is really the relevant band, it pretty much looks like a high pass filter with a strong drop off in the low frequencies. And then you can compare that to the original uh, schematic that I found from Standell, which is on the left here, and the frequency response of that has almost no uh, attenuation in the bass until you hit 20 hertz. It's uh, 6 dB down at 20 hertz, so this is really a full band thing. And then there's a sharp increase in treble above uh, 2 or 3 kilohertz, which I guess is to compensate for loss of treble in the woofer. However, this is why it sounds shrill, and this extra bass here is why it sounds so boomy. So what I did to modify this real quick was drop this to 2.2 nanofarads from 22 nanofarads, and that cuts out some bass and killing this guy by just putting 0.22 picofarads, some super tiny value, uh, because LT Spice doesn't let you put zero picofarads here, so I may just make it really small. If I run that, I, I get rid of that massive treble peak, and I have a little bit of a roll-off on the base here so that it won't be so boomy. It's about 9 dB now, down at uh, 100 hertz here. Now, you don't need this long extended tail up to 100 kilohertz that's just going to help uh, you pick up AM radio stations, which you don't really want. Uh, so increasing this capacitor here helps attenuate those high frequencies. So now you're about 10 dB down at 100 kilohertz, which, you know, we could definitely do better than that, but this is a pretty good start here. So this is my modified schematic here, which I tried, and it sounds a lot better, I think, than the original Standell uh, schematic. Okay, here's with my modded circuit, which is the original circuit with a little bit less bass and uh, without the giant treble uh, bump that comes with the original circuit. Of course, we can put some more.
more treble back. Get some some more of that if you want. And one more bass. Or cut the bass out. sound. Let's see about the, re the uh, vibrato. Alright, I was putting the circuit together here and uh, getting things wrapped up and my customer wanted a switch to switch between the original Standell uh, circuit with a 0.22 microfarad cap here which gives a pretty strong treble boost and a 22 nanofarad cap here which gave a strong bass boost uh, or you could switch this off and disconnect that cap to kill the treble so it's nice and flat and leave this at 3.3 nanos so that you get uh, a little less boominess in the bass the only switch I had was this guy, which is a three position, off, on, on. So you give me a switch with three positions, I'm going to do three things with it. So I ended up making a mode that is roughly halfway in between. Uh, so in one position we'll have uh, this 22 nano, uh, 220 nanofarad cap across 390 ohms, and the other position will be across the 100 ohms. So that'll push the cutoff frequency up to about uh, 8 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz boost roughly. And then in the neutral position it won't be connected. On the other side, the input side, we'll have 3.3 nano, 3 .3 nano by default. I've got a real nice uh, polystyrene cap here for that. Those things cost a lot. Uh, and then in one position we'll put the 22 nano in parallel with that, and in another position we'll put uh, 4.7 or 10 nanos across that uh, to give it a little more bass boost. So this should sound real nice and give a couple of options uh, that they weren't expecting to get. So it should be real nice. Out with the old and in with the new. This new circuit has a nice uh, screened top here which sh should help reject uh, noise pretty well. And I've got it all kind of blob soldered on the back there. Here's the switch with some nice coax cables to cut down noise again. So we're going to go ahead and drill a hole through one of the existing holes in this chassis to mount that. And we'll go ahead and mount this in here. Something like that. Here we go. All right, we've got this amp ready to go now. Here we go, turn the power on. I've got it set right now to my uh, modified uh, original Standell circuit, the one that I thought sounded a little bit better. Then I can switch on the Standell mode. There's a little pop here, big pop. This is the original Standell schematic. Treble's a little uh, sharper, the, the bass is definitely more prominent, and then I've got another position here which is about halfway in between. So there's a couple of settings to play with now between uh, how that input stage works. And I don't think you'd ever actually need to change it. You'd probably just put it on the one that you like the best and leave it there. Uh, it depends whether you want a sort of a full range sound with the increased treble to compensate for the woofer's loss of treble. Or whether you just want to make it sound great for guitar. Well, we don't want this input stage to blow out again. So what I did here was I chained two signal diodes together in one direction and two signal diodes in the other direction. And what this will do is clamp the input voltage to about one volt. So you can't get more than a volt into this amplifier now, uh, once I install this. And hopefully that will prevent any kind of damage from occurring to the input stage now. So I'm going to go ahead and install this little contraption here. 
Now I added a uh, that 110k resistor there in the middle because I noticed when I plug an amp or when I plug a guitar cable in, um, I would get a pop, and I think that's because the capacitor is staying charged somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this in, and then we'll test it out. Another thing I realized is there's literally no metal on top of this chassis when it's installed in the cabinet. And that means electromagnetic noise can get through the ceiling here and into the chassis. So I just took a bunch of aluminum duct tape and taped the whole inside here, uh, on the in inside top here. And I left some extra to go over the edges. So that way when I put the chassis back in there will be a uh, contact between the metal here and this metal tape to help shield uh, any possible noise out of the top of this amplifier. You can never have too much shielding tape in this guitar stuff. And here's that little snubber circuit installed on the input. Let's make sure it didn't change the tone at all. Alright, here's the final amp. It's got the new input stage, the reverb is fixed, the vibrato is fixed, and we put some anti-pop uh, circuitry in here, uh, and just giving this thing a complete workover. Let's give it a quick test, make sure things are still working alright. <laughs> 